on the substrate term which is uh, on which it is growing. So complex matter is broken down into simpler one that will be absorbed by the fungal nitrate so that is going inside the cell of the fungus where there is another set of enzyme is already ready and that is called as endoenzymes. Endo meaning inside. So that enzyme is inside the cell. So that will act upon what is absorbed already by the fungal hybrid. And then those simpler things will be further broken down at the elementary levels, which may be the food of that particular fungus. So these are the two types of enzymes which are made enzymes, exoenzymes and endoenzymes. Exo meaning outside, endo meaning inside. So one will come out of the cell, will act on the surrounding substratum. Complex matter would be broken down into simpler one that will be absorbed inside the cell. Inside the cell, there is already another set of enzyme called endoenzyme is there, which will act upon what is absorbed, and that simpler one will be further broken down into elementary level that is the food of the fungus. This is adaptive enzyme. Adaptive enzymes are those enzymes which are produced in adaptation to that particular environment or that particular substratum. Adaptive enzymes are not produced every time and by every fungus. There are only few panchayat which are able to produce this adaptive enzyme. When exo and endo enzymes are not sufficient to break down on the complex things and the simpler things at elementary level, then only adaptive enzymes are produced that is in adaptation to a particular environment or substratum. But again I repeat, these enzymes are and adaptive enzymes are not produced by all type of fungi. So these are the basic things which are helping the fungus to grow in any environment and on any substrate. Now let us discuss about what are actually modes of nutrition in fungi and how they are classified depending upon their modes. First one is the parasitic fungi. Parasitic fungi are those fungi which absorb their nourishment from the living host. And for that, they are sending what is called as absorbing hyphae. These absorbing hyphae penetrate the body of the host and absorb the nourishment. Depending upon where the actual parasitic fungus is observed with reference to host, they are classified as endoparasites or ectoparasites. Endoparasite, again as the name suggests, endo means inside. Endoparasitic fungi are those fungi which spend their life cycle, majority of their life cycle inside the host cells. Then they are called as endoparasitic fungi or simply endoparasites. As against ectoparasites, ecto means outside. Majority of the life cycle of the fungus is spent outside the host, then it is called ectoparasites. Now there may be some question, endoparasites means inside the host, no doubt about it. But before that, it is actually outside the host, then it penetrates the host, establishes itself inside the host, and then majority of the life cycle would be there inside the host. So initially it is outside. On its own, how it may develop inside the host? It is not possible. So first it is outside, it enters inside the host, establishes and majority of the life cycle would be inside the host, then endoparasitic fungi. Ecto, as the name suggests, not on outside, but for their nutritional requirements, it has to send absorbing hyphae inside the host cell. So even though it is ecto, some portion would be inside. Similarly, here, even though it is endo, initially it will be outside. This is clear. Obligate and facultative. Obligate parasitic fungi, as the name suggests, parasitic fungi means naturally it is going to absorb the nutritional requirements from the living host first. Obligate means it is getting its nourishment only from one host. If the death of the host takes place, parasitic fungus will also die. So that is obligate. Facultative, initially it starts absorbing nourishment from the living host because it is a parasitic fungus and then after the death of that particular facultative uh, host then it will change the mode of nutrition and either it will become saprophytic and then start absorbing nourishment from that dead host or 
directly it may change its mode of nutrition and start absorbing nourishment from the another living host. Is this clear? Facultative means initially it starts absorbing from the living host. It has to because it is a facultative parasite. After the death of the host, parasitic fungus will not die. This was facultative. Then what it will do? Either it will change its mode of nutrition and become saprophytic and then start absorbing its nourishment now from the same host but which is, which is dead now. Or it will go to another host and start absorbing its nourishment from the another living host. But it will not die. As against obligatory parasitic means, after the death of the host, the fungus will also die. So this is about parasitic fungi. Saprophytic fungi. It absorbs its nourishment from the dead and decaying organic matter. That's all. And fortunately there are no subtypes. So you have to remember only this. Saprophytic fungi means it absorbs its nourishment from dead and decaying organic matter. Mycorrhiza. Myco means fungus. Rhiza means root system. Now normally it is taken as root system of the higher plants. Now higher plants doesn't mean that plants are tall. No, higher in the sense they are placed at higher order in the system of classification. Fungus, fungal hyphae are found the association with the root system of the plants. Then it is called as mycorrhiza. Now what happens? Fungal hyphae absorb soil nutrients and provide to plant. With the help of these plants, uh, with the help of these nutrients, plant produces food material and a part of that food material is given to the fungus. So fungus is benefited. Now how plant is benefited? Plant which otherwise is not able to absorb those soil nutrients which fungus is absorbing is now getting ready made. So this way plant is also benefited. So this can be taken as a sort of symbiosis. It is like give and take policy. Fungus is giving soil nutrients to plant and plant is giving a part of prepared food material to fungus. In that the subtypes are endomycorrhiza, ectomycorrhiza and ram. Again as the name suggests endo inside the host. Ecto outside the host. It is forming the fungal mantle outside the host and only for absorption of the food material the IP will be sent inside absorbing IP. So what is the difference between this and this? Here it is an association. It is an association of the fungus with the plant. Here such association is not there. Here only one is benefited and that is the fungus. Whereas here both are benefited, fungus as well as the plant. Ram, vesicular or vesicular mycorrhiza. So basically it is a mycorrhiza. What is mycorrhiza? It is an association of the fungus with the root system of higher plant. But the mycorrhiza which is able to produce vesicles, simply a uh, like structure which act as the storage of food material for fungus and arbuscles where at the tip of the hypha some finger like projections are given out and that help in the absorption of the nutrients then that particular mycorrhiza is called band vesicular arbuscular mycorrhiza again the things would remain safe it will absorb soil nutrients provided to plant plant with the help of the soil nutrients will produce food material and a part of food material will be given to the fungus. So both are benefited. Fungus is not able to cause any disease to the plant. If so, then naturally that association won't take place. When friendship takes place, there is a proper understanding. Then only friendship takes place. Similarly, there is a proper understanding between the fungus and the plant. That fungus will give this and plant will give back some part of food material to fungus. Then that is called mycorrhiza. 
Ophiophilus fungi. These are the fungi which grow on animal tongue. Animal respiratory. Predaceous fungi. They are very important. Can be used as biological control of plant pathogen. Now, what is biological control of plant pathogen? Biological control that means you are using some living organism to control biological control of plant pathogen. So, there is a pathogen, there is a living organism which is causing some trouble to plant. That means how many living organisms are involved? Three. First, which you are using to control. Control of what? It's a pathogen. Control of pathogen. So there is something who is causing trouble to who? To plant. So there are three living organisms involved in this. When we are using predaceous fungi. They are called as predaceous fungi. Now, these fungi, their height they get entangled. and form a sort of network their kids are good so those hooks get entangled and they form a sort of network or simply they when nematode comes in contact with this net it is held by adhesion why it is held by adhesion because this net is sticky in nature this network is sticky. So when nematode comes in contact with this net, it is held by adhesion. Then what will happen? Nematode struggles to come out of this net, but it cannot. Then it struggles more. I can give you a parallel example for this. It is simply you can consider or visualize the spider net and house fly. If you have seen house fly, if it is trapped in the Spider leg. Naturally, it tries to come out. More it tries, more it gets yes, entangled in that. Then finally, what happens? Nematode gets exhausted and finally dies because of starvation. Once it is dead, then slowly fungal hyphae start penetrating the body of the nematode. They reach inside the body and then they form. A swelling that is called as infection bulb at the tip of the fungal hyphae. And from that bulb, again many hyphae come out and spread all over the body of the nematode and start absorbing nourishment. So these are called predaceous fungi. There is a second type of mechanism also that is called sticky spore. Spore of that particular fungus, I mean predaceous fungus, is sticky in nature. It gets adherent or attached to the body of the nematode. Then that spore terminates by forming a germ tube. That germ tube penetrates the body of the nematode. And after going inside the body of the nematode, that germ tube slowly gets tran transferred into proper mycelium with its septic and branch and absorb nourishment. The last one is hyperparasitism. There are certain fungi in the world which are able to grow on other fungi. Up to here, what we are seeing, fungi either growing on some other living host or on dead and living organic matter or forming an association, give a tech policy like mycorrhiza or growing on animal dung or even nematodes. But here, it's a special category where one fungus is able to grow on the earth. Then that fungus is called hyperparasite. So this is about the modes of nutrition in fungi. So there are different categories and why it is possible. So you can start from here. Parasitic fungi and ends at here, hyperparasite. You can see a wide range of hosts or substrata. Or here we have already discussed about the temperature range. See, minus 195 on
on one hand and on the other hand more than 70 degrees centigrade. Why it is possible? It is mainly because of they are able to produce wide range of enzymes. There has to be somebody who can break down the complex matter into simpler one and from simpler one to again elementary level and those elements are the food of the panchayat. So if fungus is not able to produce wide range of enzymes, it would be very very difficult for fungus to survive in wide range of temperature and wide range of substrata in any environment. No doubt basically they favor acidic medium, but in absence of acidic medium also they are able to survive because of this character. Is everything clear? Yes. Thank you very much for your patient listening.